you can expect anything from a virus that's mutating. It can gain new characteristics that make it disappear, or on the contrary, enable it to jump species and infect human beings. The World Health Organization has all this data, and this is why it has set off the alarm regarding the danger that the constant mutation of H5N1 can lead to transmission between humans. Um, we won't know until that virus emerges what the case fatality rate is going to be, how lethal is it going to be. But we do know right now that it will cause a, a, a huge demand on healthcare services. A lot of people suddenly will need hospitalization or intensive health care um, response. So we know that once the pandemic starts, we don't know how many people will die, we don't know how lethal it will be, but we do know it's going to be a huge strain on the public health system. If the virus jumps to the human population, its transmission will be very effective. Influenza viruses can float in the air for hours in the tiny drops of saliva that we cast out as we speak or cough. In a simple sneeze, we can free up to 150,000 viruses. This is why the flu viruses infecting people are able to travel around the world. We have no immunity. The strike of a new virus could affect 20% of the world's population, around 1,200 million people. It's possible that a vaccine uh, could be made available that will take several months once the virus to, uh, emerges uh, so that it's available to even a limited number of people. A lot of countries won't have an opportunity to buy it. They'll be left without a vaccine. Right now, the virus that we're looking at only responds to one class of antiviral, so there's probably only one drug that may be available. And that drug may not be available to a large number of people in a large number of countries. So what's important, uh, what we can do right now, what countries should be doing right now is preparing. And that means developing pandemic preparedness plans. Should workplaces be closed? Should schools be closed? Make a decision about mass gatherings. Uh, what do you do with a limited supply of antivirals? Who gets those? Are they first responders? Each time H5N1 infects a person, it causes a very serious lower lung pneumonia similar to the disease caused by another flu virus in 1918. That agent spanned the world over in just six months, infecting 500 million people and killing 40 million of a predominantly young population. The virus reached remote areas of the planet from Alaska to the most isolated Pacific Islands. Today, the world's population is three times bigger than in 1918, and it's much more concentrated in city centers. Optimal conditions for the virus to spread in the air. Now, there are more than 200 um, uh, countries in the world right now. We've seen uh, pandemic preparedness plans for fewer than 50 of those countries. And some of those plans actually are not, um, they're in the very early stages of, of development. So we think the world right now is inadequately prepared uh, to deal with a pandemic influenza outbreak. It may or may not occur, but in the meantime, people wait defenseless against the looming threat. Urgent measures are needed. The gathering of antiviral drugs that haven't yet been proven effective and vaccines that won't be ready for months. There are those who are critical of alarming populations when H5N1 has not reached their societies. There's no pandemic scenario yet. Ildefonso Hernandez reminds us that there are other urgent diseases and a vulnerable population unable to protect itself. Ildefonso Hernandez, president of the Spanish Epidemiology Society. We're going to reduce the impact on whom, on which populations, and in which countries. This must come first because maybe part of the world will get ready, this we can be sure of, but another part of the world will not be in any way ready for this impact. While the nutritional level and health services are at a very high level and well organized in developed countries, in other countries it's completely the opposite. 
While in developed countries, deaths due to complications like, like pneumonia can be reduced since there are high quality healthcare services. In other countries, in the so-called third world, the pandemic impact will be much more serious because there are many people with a very deficient immune system, either because of other diseases like HIV, the, the AIDS virus, or malaria, or because of the miserable nutritional level that extends throughout large areas of the world, making this population very vulnerable and helpless against situations such as these. Today, H5N1 is spreading through migratory birds, infecting the population and inducing a high death rate wherever it goes. That the virus will end up passing on to people is both a matter of time and chance. There's no biological law in this case, just pure luck. Of course, it will start at one point, and from there, in just six months, it'll spread from one person to another throughout the entire planet. H5N1, or the mutant virus that'll come from it, will have bid farewell to his host, the migratory bird. It will never again be a bird virus. A new infectious agent will have joined the growing list of viruses, all coming from wild animals and infecting humans all around us.